Hey, Grade 11s. I'm going to be working through a bank reconciliation question for 30 marks. Shouldn't take you very long. And I'm going to be filling in the answers or highlighting the correct answers in the answer book. Uh, don't look at the rest of the answers. Only focus on what we're dealing with. Um, and hopefully this will just boost your confidence in this chapter. Right. So we've been given the following. It says required. Complete the cash receipts and cash payments journal of gold traders. Post to the bank account in the general ledger and prepare the bank reconciliation statement. Just before we get in, remember that when we complete the journals, we are completing it with the information that we were unaware of. We didn't know, right? And then when we do the bank reconciliation, that is for the information that the bank was not aware of. Okay, so whenever you read transactions, you must decide where am I putting this information? Is it in our journals, in the recon, or possibly nowhere? Okay, what have we been given now? Information. We firstly are given the extract from the bank recon at the end of January. Remember, we are asked for the bank recon for February. So it makes sense that we are first given January's bank recon. So hopefully the credits, the late deposit and three of the checks, hopefully they would have arrived now in February. If those four lines have not yet arrived or have not been dealt with, it means that we would have to reappear them or put them in February's bank recon again. Okay, but probably the adjustments to follow will address um, most of those lines that I've highlighted. One thing to note is that the bank account balance is a question mark. We'll get there just now, but how will we work it out? We will reconstruct this one column answer, this one column recon into two columns and the balancing figure will be that question mark. Okay, so getting ready to start, here's our information. The following provisional totals were extracted from the cash receipts and cash payments journals. So the first step is simply to take it, take those totals. Oh, look, they, it looks like that they've already been printed in your answer book, robbing you of an extra easy mark maybe. But there it is. We've started. Number three, a long adjustment. Let's see what it says. On comparison of the May, sorry, of the bank statement from Money Bank for February with the cash receipts journal for February, and the bank recon statement of January, the following differences were revealed. Right, so the first one, check number 178, stop, let's go see. Is it in last month's recon? Yes, there is check number 178. It tells us that it was presented for payment. This means that there's nothing to do with that entry, okay? Next part of this adjustment says check number 183, was issued to Young Chess Club as a donation and the club has since closed down and the check must be cancelled. Okay, so we need to do something now. From last month, we issued a check, number 183 there, and it had not been presented for payment. Now that we hear the check, the, the, the club is no more, we have to cancel that check by entering that amount in the CRJ. So let's go there. Here's the CRJ bank statement because that's what's telling us about this. Young Chess Club is the name, 1-2 under bank and 1-2 under sundry, and donations is our contra. Our mistake or our thing to correct, so that's why it goes to the journal. The next adjustment in number three says a deposit for 1650 on the bank statement on the 1st of February 2016 was not in the journals for February 2016. Why was it not there? That's because the receipt of that money was in January. And we deposited it probably towards the end of January. Now it's appearing in February. So is there anything for us to do with the 1650? No, it's all cleared and we're happy. Right, from looking at last month's recon then, you will see that there's an outstanding check, number 170, that hasn't been dealt with. So I'm going to highlight that in green because we may need to come back to speak to that amount later. Uh, number four says no entry has been made. So this is our problem. For check number 191, 1260, dated the 22nd of March 2016. So that is a post dated check. We have issued this check out even though the money will not come off our bank statement yet because the date has not arrived. It was issued in favor of Ron Traders for stock purchased and the check has not been presented for payment as yet. Obviously not because Ron Traders cannot yet claim the money. If it says no entry has been made for the check, we still have to put it in the CPJ. Why? Even though the date has not yet arrived, we put it in our CPJ to maintain numerical sequence of our checks. 
we have issued the check, so it must go to the CPJ. There it is. I could also accept that you put the check number there, otherwise bank statement, Ron Traders, 1260, 1260, and it told us that we paid, we bought it for stock. So that's why trading stock is that account name there. Okay. If it has not yet been presented for payment, it is also going to go in the bank recon statement. There it is. Uh, I think it's there, hey, 1260. 1260, check number 191. Don't worry about anything else, but it's a check that hasn't been claimed yet. So debit side for outstanding checks. Moving on to the next one, number five. In the cash receipts journal, an entry was made on the 28th of February in respect of a deposit, 3,460, which did not appear on the bank statement. Right, because it's this, this is on the last day of the month, chances are the bank has not yet pushed the buttons and processed this deposit. So this will go to the bank recon and it will be credit, late deposit or outstanding deposit. Done. Easy. Number six. Check number 195, just stop for a second. Let's go see if it was mentioned last month's recon. No, so carry on. Check number 195 for 700 Rand was issued to Nandi stores and was lost in the post. The check was stopped and replaced with check number 199. No entries have been made, but the check has not yet been presented to the bank for payment. So there's a lot of things we need to do here. Firstly, the check was stopped. So how do we cancel a check? We go and cancel it in the CRJ. There it is, CRJ. Um, let's go find it there. It says check number 195 for 700 Rand was lost in the post. The check was stopped. Okay, so we stop this check. Let us see. Why is it not there? Okay, let's think of it this way. It says it was stopped and replaced with check number 199. So what the memo has done Instead of first cancelling the check over here in the CRJ, right, by putting the original check and cancelling it in the CRJ, and then putting another check in the CPJ, they have said this will not affect the bank balance at all, so we're just going to eliminate and not even do the journal side of things. Okay, I would rather have put it in the journals, but oh well. Also, because the amount has not yet been claimed, it has not yet been presented for payment, there, debit, outstanding checks, number 199 for 700 Rand. Okay, so although I said there's a lot to do, they've only put it in one place. I'll say it again, they could have put 700 Rand in the CR and CPJ, but because they'd cancel each other out, they've chosen just to ignore it. Okay, the next adjustment, number seven says, the check, a check drawn by debtor, B loss, was dishonored by the bank due to insufficient funds. The check was received in settlement of his debt of 550 Rand. 50 Rand discount was allowed to be loss. Okay, if the check was received to settle his debt of 550, how much money did he actually give us? Okay, that means he's given us 500 Rand because we gave him 50 Rand off. Now, when he gave us the money, we put it in the CRJ thinking we received money. If now it is bounced and we actually haven't got the money, we have to cancel that receipt by putting the amount in the CPJ. How much? 500 Rand, because that's the amount of the check. There it is. We could put 191 over there. Um, I don't know why that 191 is there actually. Doesn't matter. Okay, and it says B loss, 550 minus 50, 500, 500, debtors control. Great, that's all we need to do there. What about the 50 Rand discount? That would have been cancelled in the general journal where discount allowed would have been reduced and debtor's control added up or boosted a bit. But would this have affected cash in any way? No. So we can ignore the 50 Rand. Moving on. Check number 203 for 1670 issued to a creditor, JWED Traders, appeared in the bank statement. The check, however, was recorded as 1760 in the CPJ. Right, so who is wrong here? We are wrong. We wrongly put it as 1760. We should only have put it as 1670. So we have put too much in the CPJ and must reduce the CPJ. How do we reduce a payment? By putting it in the CRJ. What's the difference? It looks like it could be, what, 90 Rand difference. So we go to the CRJ, there it is. We could reference the check if we want, otherwise bank statement, 
JWE traders, 90 Rand, 90 Rand, and creditors control because we were paying off a debt with them. Right? So read carefully who made the mistake, us or them. And in this case, we made the mistake. Number nine, a tenant, Rose Florist, had deposited the rent for February 2016 directly into the current account, 2400 This means we have forgotten to process this receipt. So we go to the CRJ and we process the receipt. Rose Flores 2424 and rent income. At this stage, take, it, take my word for it, we are done with the CRJ and we could total the bank column. We don't really care about the total of sundry. Bank total is the one we want. Going back to the adjustments, we can see number 10, bank charges amounting to 800 Rand was charged by the bank. Simple adjustment. This means that we have to update our CPJ bank statement, money bank, the name of our bank, 800, 800, and bank charges being the word. At this stage, also take my word for it, bank is finished in the CPJ, so we can total it as 25,320. Right, number 11, a deposit of 2,800 Rand appeared on the bank statement. This was incorrectly recorded in the account of the business, and the bank will correct their error. Okay, so these are not very popular transactions, and it says that the bank has messed up. So we have to fix this in the bank recon, right? If it means a deposit of 2,800 Rand was recorded, it means that our bank statement balance is too high. So we fix it by going as follows. Debit the correction of error, 2,800 Rand. Because they wrongly gave us money, so now we have to take it away, right? Number 12, on the end of February 2016, the bank statement showed a credit balance. What does credit mean, by the way? It means that we've got money in our bank. A debit for us is good, and a credit in the bank statement is therefore also favorable of 8,400 Rand. So we go put it in our bank recon, the first line, credit balance as per bank statement, 8,400. Right, that is it for the adjustments. We're done, but we're not quite finished with the activity. So what's left for us to do? I mentioned earlier that this debit outstanding check, number 170 of 250, was not mentioned anywhere. It means that we have to make it reappear in the bank recon as an outstanding check. Right? Almost there. Because our journals have now been completed, we will now post these new totals to our bank ledger account. Before we get there, get there though, there is an opening balance of the bank account that we would need to work out, and there it is, that question mark. So, what were the credit amounts here in this line? The credit amounts would have been the balance as per the bank statement, it would have been the credit amount of the late deposit, these would have been a debit, and a debit, this one would have been a debit, and this one would have been a debit. In order for the bank recon to balance, this question mark is therefore the missing figure. So, they have said the two credits, 1400 and 1650, which are labeled as CRs, and then minus the three debits, leaving us with an over leftover figure of 200 Rand, which would be credit. We therefore must have started with an opening overdraft balance of 200 Rand. Now, we bring forward the total receipts from our CRJ, and we bring forward the total payments from our CPJ, and we now can work out what our bank balance in our eyes at the end of the month would have been. Carry down on the credit, brought down on the debit, so we've improved our books here, our balance at the end of the month, or the 1st of March, 6850. I take that figure down to my bank recon, the last line, Debit balance as per bank account, 6850, it's written a bit weird there, 6850, our books balance, and now we sit back, total the debit and credit columns, and it balances. So our bank recon balances, we have sorted out all the things that don't, do not tie up, and we're good to go to the next question. Okay, I hope this one, this video assisted you, I'll make a few more.